So welcome everybody to this latest video 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going over the AQA AS Maths paper of May 2021, paper 2, section A. Now as always I'll include a question breakdown in the description below so you can see which question refers to which topic. So let's get started on this section A of the May 2021, paper 2, AS Maths paper. So looking at question 1 it says express as a single power of A, A squared over root A. So what we want to do here is basically convert the root a as a power and just selecting a pen so we get a squared over a to the half and that's going to equal a and then because we're dividing we take away the powers and that gives me a to the power of 3 over 2 which is our second option. Now moving on to question 2 it says one of the diagrams below shows the graph of y equals sine x plus 90 for the region of 0 and 360, identify the correct graph. Now for this, it's just a case of first of all, you want to draw the original graph, which in this case is sine x. So sine x looks like this between 0 and 360. Then this graph transformation shows that it's been shifted 90 degrees to the left. So it's a 90 degree shift to the left. So that means that this point here, which is at 90, is now going to be here. And we do that in different colours, so it actually stands out. So let's go for green. So it's going to be there, 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 and there, which is basically our third option. Then moving on to question three, it says, it is given that dy dx equals root x. Find an expression for y. So first things first, what we want to do is convert the root x to an index. So that then becomes dy over dx equals x to the half. And then we want to integrate it. So when integrating, we increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. So that's going to be x to the power of 3 over 2 over 3 over 2 plus c. And then we, if we just neaten up this first term, that then becomes 2x to the 3 over 2 over 3 plus c. Or alternately, what you could do is write y equals 2 thirds x to the 3 over 2 plus c. And that would be absolutely fine as well. Then moving on to question 4, it says for a, find the binomial expansion of 1 minus 2x to the power of 5 in ascending powers of x up to and including the term x squared. So again, depending on your method of using binomial expansion, whether you use a formula or a quick way of doing it, it's entirely up to you. It is only worth two marks. So I would say if you just wrote down the right answer, not that probably anyone would, without showing any working out, you would get four marks. So here, our first term is going to be five zero. Then it's the first term, which is one. And our second term, which is minus two x. Now the first term starts with the power high second term starts with the power low so that would be the first one then 5 1 1 to the power of 4 times minus 2x to the power of 1 and then 5 2 times 1 to the power of 3 times minus 2x squared equals and if i use my calculator type those in and book taking extra care with this second term knowing that it's minus 2x not positive 2x then what we end up with is 1 minus 10x and positive 40x squared. So my answer is going to be 1 minus 10x plus 40x squared. Then for question B, it says find the first two non-zero terms in the expansion of 1 minus 2x to the power of 5 plus 1 plus 5x squared. Now this is our answer in part A. So the only thing that's left for me to do is work with the expansion of 1 plus 5x squared. Now that I can just use double brackets or you can use binomial expansion. It's entirely up to you which you prefer. But basically you'll end up with 1 plus 10x plus 25x squared. So I then want to add this to the expansion of 1 minus 2x to the power of 5 which I did in part a which I can just about see on my screen so then adding these two things together 
I get 2. Now the plus 10 and the minus 10 cancel each other out. So that's going to be plus 65x squared. And there is my final answer. Then for part C, it says, hence, use an appropriate value for x to obtain the approximation of 0 0.8998 to the power of 5 plus 1.005 to the power of 2. So again, here you want to make sure you're picking the right x value, which in this case is going to be 0 0.001. And then using the answer in part B, we get 2 plus 65x squared. So that's going to be 2 plus naught, well, actually going to be 65 multiplied by 0 0.001 squared. And if I type that all into my calculator, I get an answer of 2.000065. Then moving on to question five, it says ABC is a triangle. The point D lies on AC. AB equals eight centimeters. BC equals BD, which equals seven centimeters. And angle A is 60 degrees as shown in the diagram. Using the cosine rule, find the length of AC. So for this, what we can spot is that if I draw a triangle out again, and this is A, this is C, this is B, this is eight, that's seven, and this angle here is 60. So then using the cosine rule of A squared plus B, well no, it's gonna be A squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a and substituting those numbers in i get 49 equals 8 squared which is 64 plus x squared minus 2 times 8 times x times cos 60. now cos 60 is a half so if i just highlight all of this cos 60 is a half So then what I end up with is 49 equals 64 minus x squared. And then it's going to be 2 times, oh, it's going to be 8 times a half in terms of that. So that's going to be 8 because a half and the 2 cancel out. So that's going to be minus 8x. And then this slowly starts to look like a quadratic. So I end up with x squared and it's going to be, that should be a plus, sorry, uh, minus 8x plus 15 equals 0 and then if I then go on to solve this and it does factorize so let's just quickly factorize this but ultimately I'll end up with an answer of x equals 3 or x equals 5. Now for the length AC now as you can see in terms of the triangle ADB and ABC the dimensions of the information that's been given to me is the same for both triangles so looking at the dimensions that either this is going to be the two lengths of x that I found. Now here, looking at the two values, I've got x equals 3 and x equals 5. Now AC is the longer of the two, so x equals AD and AC. So as AC is longer, AC equals 5 centimetres. Now, alternately, it does ask me for 5b, 10th state, the length of AD, which is a smaller answer. And so that means that AD is going to equal 3 centimetres. Now, moving on to question 6, it says, find the solution to 5 to the power of 2x plus 4 equals 9, giving your answer in the form of a plus log 5 to uh, base 5b, where a and b are integers. So first things first, rather than splitting up the power on the left hand side, I can take it purely into log form. So we know that y equals a to the x and that is going to equal log a y equals x. So using this, what we end up with taking the log of both sides, I take log of uh, base 5, well, of 9 equals 2x plus 4. Now I can write the 9 as a power, so I can write that as 3 squared equals 2x plus 4. 
I can then take the 2 over, so that then becomes 2 log 5, 3 equals 2x plus 4. I can then take the 2 over, sorry, the th 4 over equals 2x. And then dividing everything by 2, I end up with log 5, 3 minus 2 equals x. Now to write it in the form that they wanted me to, so I can write minus 2 plus log 5, 3 equals x. And there is my final answer for that one. Then moving on to question 7, it says the diagram below shows the graph of the curve that has the equation of y equals x squared minus 3x plus 2 along, two, along with two shaded regions. State the coordinates of the points A, B and C. So we know that A, B and C are, looking at the diagram, are the axis intercepts. So to find the y-intercept, we make when x equals 0, then y is just purely going to equal 2. So therefore, A is going to have a coordinate of 0, 2. Now to find the x-intercepts, that's when y equals 0. Then what we end up with is x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. And that does factorise, so we get x minus 2, x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals 2 or 1. Now looking at b and c, b is the one that's going to have an x-ordinate of 1, and c is going to have an x-ordinate of 2. And so there are my three coordinates. Then for 7b, it says Katie is asked by her teacher to find the total area of the two shaded regions. Katie uses a calculator to find, then she types in the integral with the limits of 2, 0, and gets an answer of 2 thirds. Katie's teacher says that her answer is incorrect. Show that the total area of the two shaded regions is 1. Fully justify your answer. So going back to the diagram, we can see that we've got two areas here. We've got A and we've got B. Now I'll do, um, just forgot on what number question this is, so 7B. I. So here, looking at area A, we've got the limits of 2, sorry, 1 and 0. And we enter the formula of x squared minus 3x plus 2 dx. Now I can substitute that straight into my calculator and it gives me an answer of 5 6. Now if you wanted to, I personally would probably recommend that you do integrate this so it becomes x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2 plus 2x. And just in case there's a method mark in there, but that does equal 5 6. I then want to work out area B. And that's using the limits of 2 and 1 with x squared minus 3x plus 2 dx and that gives me an answer of 1 6 so that minus 1 6 rather but as it refers to area it's going to equal positive 6 so the total area then is going to be 5 6 plus 1 6 which is 1 and there's my answer for 7b i it then says for 7b, I, I explain why Katie's method was not valid. So you want to say something along the lines of that the calculator treats the area between B and C or 1 and 2 as negative. So something along those lines would be absolutely fine for that single mark. Now moving on to question 8 it says that it is given that y equals 3x minus 5x squared. Use differentiation from first principles to find the expression for dy over dx. So first of all what we need to do is first of all work out our two coordinates. Now one of our coordinates is when I substitute x I get the y ordinate of 3x minus 5x squared. Now for the second coordinate, this is where I use the coordinate of x plus h. I don't want to put a bracket there, so let me get rid of that. And if I substitute, 
So this here is my f of x, then f x plus h is going to be 3 lots of x plus h minus 5 lots of x plus h squared. So the y ordinate is going to be 3x plus h minus 5x plus h squared. Now using these two coordinates and knowing that the gradient or m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Substituting those numbers in, what do I get? Well, I get that the gradient is going to equal, so m, where h is tending towards 0, is going to equal y2, which is at 3x plus h minus 5x plus h squared, minus y1, which is 3x minus 5 x squared all over x y x2 which is x plus h minus x1 which is just x then simplifying the numerator what do we get well we get 3x plus 3h minus 5 lots of x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 3x plus 5x squared and that's all going to be over h. Then if I simplify them further, then I get 3x plus 3h minus 5x squared minus 10xh minus 5h squared minus 3x plus 5x squared, all divided by h. And this is where hopefully things will cancel. So this 3x cancels with that 3x. 5x squared cancels with the 5x squared, so all that I'm left with is going to be 3h minus 10xh minus 5h squared all over h. Then if I cancel the h's, then what I end up with is 3 minus 10x minus 5h. So as h tends towards 0, what I'm left with is 3 minus 10x, and there is my expression for dy dx. Then moving on to question 9, 8, it says express 9 cubed minus n as a product of three factors. Well, the first thing you want to do here is factorise with respect to n, so I get n squared minus 1. Then hopefully that you spot that this is going to be a difference of two squares, so then that's going to equal n n minus 1, n plus 1. It then says for 9b, given that n is a positive integer, prove that n cubed minus n is a multiple of 6. So if n is greater than 0, then n minus 1, n and n plus 1 are three consecutive numbers. Now, if three consecutive numbers, then at least one will be a factor of two, and one will be a factor of three. So therefore, 3 times 2, which is 6, will be a multiple. So something along those lines would be absolutely fine for the three marks. And then moving on to question 10, it says that a square sheet of metal has edges of 30 centimetres long. Four squares, each with an edge of x centimetres, where x is less than 15, are removed from the corners of the sheet. The four rectangular sections are bent upwards to form an open top box as shown in the diagram. Show that the capacity of C in centimetre cubes of the box is given by C equals 900x minus 120x squared plus 4x cubed. So first things first, the capacity is the volume of the box. So what we're wanting to do is first of all work out what the dimensions of the box are going to be. 
Now, if all of this side here is 30 and this bit here is X and so is this bit, then that means that the length of the box when it's turned into a, an open top box is going to be 30 minus 2X. And this length here will also be the same of 30 minus 2X and the height of the box is going to be X. So that means that the capacity using L times W times H and doing a bit of rearranging of that, we get C equals X, lots of 30 minus 2X, 30 minus 2X. Then all that's left for me to do is just do some expansions and simplifying. So I simplify the brackets first. I'm going to end up with 900 minus 120X plus 4x squared and if I multiply out the x I get 900x minus 120x squared plus 4x cubed which is what they wanted me to show. Then for 10b it says find the maximum capacity of the box and it says fully justify your answer which basically means we just need to fully show our answer. So if I first of all just write down what c is and just remind myself of what that is. So C equals, and it was 900X minus 120X squared plus 4X cubed. So first things first, what I need to do is I need to work out what DC over DX is going to equal. So if I differentiate that, I get 900 minus 240X plus 12X squared. Now, what we then need to do is find the stationary points. So then if we make DC over DX equals to zero, then what we end up with is 900 minus 240X plus 12X squared equals zero, which you should be able to spot that it is going to be a quadratic equation. So then if I divide everything by 12 and just do a bit of rejigging, I get X squared minus 20X plus 75 equals zero. I then need to go on and solve this. So I can either use a calculator or see if it factorizes, which it does, in which I get X minus 15, X minus five equals zero. So I get two X values of 15 or positive five. Now we know it can't equal this as X is gonna be less than 15, which is stated in the question. So our answer of X is five centimeters. So then from this, what I then need to do is to find the nature of the turning point. Now we know it's a cubic equation here, so it's gonna have two turning points. So finding the second derivative of D squared C over DX squared, I get a formula of minus 240 plus 24 X. Now, when x equals 5, then that second derivative is less than 0. So at 5, the turning point is a maximum point. So then substituting when x is 5, so when x equals 5, c equals, and it's going to be 900, multiplied by 5 minus 120 times 5 squared plus 4 lots of 5 cubed and if I type that all into my calculator I get a capacity of 2000 centimeter cubed. Now moving on to question 11 it says that a circle C has a center of 0, 10 and a radius of root 20. The line L has the equation of Y equals MX. And then for part AI, it says show that the X ordinate of any intersection point of L and C satisfy the equation. And we've got our equation there. So the first thing I need to do is first of all, find the equation of the circle. So using this bit of information here, I get that the equation of the circle is going to be X squared plus and it's going to be y minus 10 squared equals 20. Then the equation of the line, which is just y equals mx. So that if I then substitute, so if I just put this as hashtag one, hashtag two, so sub 
hashtag two into hashtag one, then what I end up with is x squared plus mx minus 10 squared equals 20. Then doing a bit of expansion, I get x squared plus m squared x squared minus, and it's going to be 20 and x plus 100 equals 20. And then that gives me x squared plus m squared x squared minus 20 and x plus 80 equals zero. And then all that's left for me to do is to factorize these two things in which I end up with what they want me to have, which is one plus m squared x squared minus 20 mx plus 80 equals zero. Then for part 11 AI, I, it says find the values of m for which the equation of part AI has equal roots. So if equal roots, then b squared minus 4ac is going to equal 0. Now I can just about see the components on the screen. So a equals 1 plus uh, m squared. And yeah. b equals minus 20m. And c equals 80. So substituting those numbers in, what do I get? Well, I'm going to end up with minus 20m squared minus 4 times 80 times 1 plus m squared and that equals 0. So expanding this out what I end up with is I'm going to end up with 400 let's use a different colour so I end up with 400 m squared minus and then if I need to sum of this up I get 320 1 plus m squared equals 0 and so I end up with 400m squared minus 320 plus 320m squared equals 0. So then simplifying that further, what I end up with is 80m squared equals 320. So m squared equals 40. So m equals actually 4, not 40. So m equals plus or minus 2. Now moving on to question 11b, it says two lines are drawn from the origin that are tangents to C. Find the coordinates of the points of contact between the tangents and C. So first things first, if I do a little sketch about what it is they're actually wanting me to find. So if I just start by drawing a circle and not an oval, so let's just do something that looks like similar. And uh, let me just draw, get some axes drawn like so. So we know that it's going to look something that looks like this in terms of the axes. And let me just move that. I'm not going to get this right, so let's just do it freehand. So what I end up with is something that looks like this. Now, what the question is asking me is basically if I draw two tangents that intercept at the origin, so there's one, so that's one tangent, let's put that in green, and then let's do another one. And there we go, like so. What the question is asking me is to find out what these coordinates here are going to be. So we know that m equals plus or minus 2. So when m equals positive 2, then what we end up with is going to be y equals, well, we're going to end up with 5x squared minus 40x plus 80 equals 0. Now, where I've got that from is basically by substituting our m value into this expression here. Now from this what I can then do is then go on and solve this using the calculator and I get an x value of 4. Then to find the y value sub x equals 4 into the equation of the circle which was 
y squ x squared plus y minus 10 squared equals 20. And I get a y value of 8. So this point here is 4, 8. Then if I then substitute, so if I can just write that coordinate, so it's 4, 8. Then for the second coordinate, so when m equals minus 2, so then the equation then becomes 5x squared plus 40x plus 80 equals 0. And I solve that and I get an x value of minus 4. Then if I sub x equals minus 4 into the equation of the circle, I get a y value of 8. So therefore, the second coordinate is minus 4, 8. And that there is the end of section A.